looking at now, this deep part is to the south of Dublin. And it's probably uh, 75 to 100 feet below where we are. Okay, you're aimed up a little high. Up on the far side to above us. Okay, how's that now? A lot better. Hey, I, you don't need to stop talking when I talk if you can do both at once. Okay. continues to pan the color television camera around for a look at the surroundings in which the lunar module Antares landed this morning. About an hour into their walk, the moon, and they've got another three hours to go. Let's listen in. Indiana reference here every once in a while is a camera code camera reference camera to camera one of the camera magazines camera of the camera that uh, is marked I, I uh, Indianapolis. It may look like it from there. We'll go by there later on. Roger. Right Let's press on with the TV panorama. We're about uh, two minutes behind timeline at this point, Ed. videotape so that it only takes a relatively brief uh, period of time looking at the, the scene and that we can play it back a frame at a time later on. Back to 25. 
We have lost the uh, color television uh, for a moment from the uh, moon. Uh, this was a planned uh, uh, recess in the coverage on the uh, of the moon by the color television camera while they rewind the color converter or something like that. Uh, maybe somebody can explain it to me in better in better phrase later, but uh, that's the way it's passed on to me now. Uh, and in a one minute or so, we'll have the color television back again. Very shortly thereafter, uh, Ed Mitchell will be taking the camera back uh, to the uh, Mesa, uh, to this uh, the tray you saw deployed from the lunar module descent stage a moment ago, and it will be reaffixed there and aimed uh, at the area where they'll be setting up the scientific experiments and the nuclear power central station that will transmit the results of those experiments back to Earth over a period of uh, a year uh, or more, or probably much more. They're running just a little bit behind their timeline, but not far, two or three minutes uh, from the very uh, the plan set for all of these activities in the first planning of this mission 17 months ago. It's really remarkable how close they hold to these schedules with all that uh, must uh, be fed into them and all that must take place. It's going very well. The flag has been deployed. We saw a great picture of that. We had a good look around the moon, and uh, now, very shortly, we'll see them setting up the uh, scientific experiments. Al Shepard and Ed Mitchell, men on the moon, the fifth and the sixth. Al Shepard at 47 years old, the oldest astronaut in the astronaut uh, corps. Of our first man in space finally getting his long-held wish to make it to the moon. And for a long period of over six years, he didn't think he'd ever fly again with that uh, ear disorder he had. But uh, in 1968, he underwent an operation, cleared it up. He kept himself in superb physical shape throughout. He went on a very high-intensity training program and qualified for this flight to the moon. Okay, what's 
zoom you on. Okay, how's that? We need to back off the zoom some. Uh, yeah, I think we'll have to. This is a great picture. Okay. News color coverage. A man's fourth walk on the moon will continue in a moment. Coverage of the flight of Apollo 14 will continue in a moment. This is CBS. This is a CBS News special report. Ten years later. Flight of Apollo 14, sponsored by Tang, the nutritious breakfast drink for breakfast tomorrow, and Western Electric, the people who make communications equipment for the Bell system. Here again is Walter Cronkite. Ten years later, to be precise, nine years and nine months since Al Shepard uh, made the United States' first flight into space. A little tentative step, just 115 miles up and third, uh, 302 miles downrange from then Cape Canaveral. That same Alan Shepard uh, stands on the moon. He's just readjusted the camera, and uh, now he and his partner in the flight of Antares to the moon are unloading equipment packages. And with these first color pictures from the moon, we're watching them as they go through their detailed, highly sophisticated and refined chores on the moon. They've been out now uh, about an hour and 20 minutes. This uh, walk is scheduled for about four hours. some kind there is interesting. I hadn't thought about it before, but I suppose with the lack of uh, atmospheric resistance, uh, a pendulum of that sort would swing almost indefinitely, wouldn't it? I mean, where, where is the, uh, there's, there's no, no friction against the friction at the top, only at the focal yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. level. samples, soil dust and so forth. Interesting. Uh, now they have this little cart to carry it all on. The interesting thing about this cart, there are fenders over each of the wheels so that the lunar soil won't be uh, flipped up as the wheels rotate and throw it all over the men or all over the equipment. Uh, this was a, a, a later development as they started realizing what might happen with it. As we've seen as they move around there, that uh, moon dust which uh, uh, clings to any body that touches it, apparently. Uh, one of the surprising things they found, I think, on Apollo 11, uh, it also flies in the air as you kick it around. It, it doesn't settle immediately, obviously, again, in that one-sixth 
atmosphere. We now show heart rates on Shepard between 70 and 80 on Metro very rarely, very very good. 80 and 90. Very good. We're at uh, one hour 35 minutes. Thank <laughs> you. 